Okay, we've got another really, really cool plant to tell you about. Because as you can see, I don't spend my time with lame plants. I only talk about cool plants. I only grow cool plants. I only sell cool plants. And sometimes I don't even learn the names of non-cool plants because why? Why like fill your brain with information you don't want to know unless you really hate that plant, in which case like you remember the name because you hate it so much. But uh, here's a plant that's really, really fun. Um, and it's beautiful and it has a really cool story. Uh, again, it's another plant that we uh, probably absolutely do not sell in the nursery. So um, maybe we could find you one special order, but probably not because we're too busy just taking care of the plants that we do sell. But, uh, but nonetheless, you need to know about this plant. It's so cool. Look at those big clusters of carmine red flowers. Okay, this, my friends, is uh, Shodia bractopetala. Shodia is a close Latinized name of a dude's name who was a Dutch botanist from the 1700s. And um, then uh, Bractipetala uh, refers to the, the uh, foliage, well, I'm sorry, the flower. We'll go look at some close-up of a flower here. Here's a, here's a fairly close-up. We got a better one down here. I'll show you. Um, right here. Uh, the, uh, it refers to the flower. Um, it's uh, because it's so short. These parts right in here. Brachypetala. Brachypetala. Uh, and, um, and that's the petal. <laughs> it's actually not the flower. The flower is inside there. That's just the petal. So, Brachypetala, Shodia Brachypetala. It's also known as the tree, African tree fuchsia because it's native to Africa. Um, it's native to South Africa, um, south of the Zambezi River in a whole bunch of different locales. There's like five or six different species of this genus. Um, and you'll see what's going on here is you just have tons and tons of birds because there's so much nectar in uh, these flowers. And, um, you know, we could take these flowers off and bring them inside. Look at how cool that would be. Ooh, they're falling all over my face. Falling all over my face. Can we get it? Can we get it? Can we get it? Can we get it? Oh, I taste the nectar. Oh my gosh, it's, it's totally sweet. I literally was tasting the nectar. Mm. 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 Wow. Mm. Mm. That's really good. <laughs> this is how people discovered food and the stuff they could eat. I was underneath that thing. <laughs> I've got a bunch of flower parts in my mouth. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> you think that's how they discovered what they could eat? Like they were standing under a tree, and then like parts fell into their mouth. Cause they're laying there like sleeping under the tree and all of a sudden stuff fell in and they swallowed it and they realized they didn't get sick and they're like, hey, I could eat that. Anyway, I just discovered that running dewy water through this plant and dripping it out will cause this wonderful sweet uh, <laughs> um, sweetness, sweet water. So there you go. But imagine bringing this inside your house to impress all your friends. Uh, such a gorgeous plant. So you can see the foliage, it's evergreen, it's shiny. It's lustrous. It's beautiful. Uh, the tree has a fairly open habit. This is about as big of a tree as I know of or have seen. And uh, I am, um, you're probably wondering where I am. There's not, you won't see many of these trees in the Bay Area, but you will see some at the Oakland Zoo in the South African, all the, uh, the African um, exhibit there that I myself installed and created and designed. And uh, it's been many years, it's been like 20 years. So some of the trees are getting big and looking fantastic. And there's a whole bunch of things that aren't there anymore because the place, kids would just run all through that place and just trash my plants. I remember I went there and the director of the zoo, Joel Parrott, really good buddy of mine, I love that guy. Got to meet him if you don't know. Um, he, uh, <laughs> we're walking up to the, the exhibit after like a month of it being installed with all these really cool intricate plants. And uh, not to change the subject, but look at the flowers coming directly off the bark of 
that that branch. Isn't that awesome? Um, but yeah, I was walking up to the exhibit after like a month with Joel, so proud of what I did. And he's like, you know, I want to keep this thing, you know, really open. And I don't want to like put a fence around it or anything. <laughs> and uh, he's like, I don't think we need one. And uh, right as he's saying that, a whole bunch of these kids came and just ran straight through all of these rare, beautiful little plants and bulbs and flowers and stuff I had planted. And I'm like, Joel, I think that we need a fence. It's been one day. And, uh, <laughs> and they just rampaged through my plants. I was like, oh, what's going to happen after like, like, I don't know, five years of this. But anyway, I'm pretty sure my shodia is still there. And it's probably one of the only ones in Northern California because no one knows about this plant. Um, so you can go see it there. And you might be able to get ordered this thing off the internet or whatever. And it even will germinate from seed. I'm noticing right there. I could just dig up. Uh, where is it? There it is. There it is right there. This little plant here and um, sell it to you. Um, but uh, anyway, uh, so I'm actually down here on a property that I own that I bought from a plant collector. And I have a house that I rent out. Uh, and then uh, I keep a little unit here that I'm making really nice. And someday you'll be able to come down here and um, uh, rent this place for me and get this amazing botanical experience that I'm adding to from the beautiful work that uh, a, Mary, a lady named Mary McBride did. But she planted this tree. Uh, and so here it is. So you can see this is a triple trunk right here. It looks like maybe it died to the ground. Then it sprouted back, has this beautiful trunk here. And so that you know, uh, this tree actually has some practical uses. The wood is really good for furniture. Um, the tree actually gets many more leaves after the flowering season. So if you're wondering, it's so lightly canopied. Um, but the tree has some, some really important uses besides just being a beautiful ornamental tree. Uh, most importantly, the bark on this tree can be uh, made into a decoction that will help you uh, with your purifying your blood and uh, hangovers <laughs> and even diarrhea all at the same time. So that's really important when you come back from Mexico. And uh, Mexico is not far away in that direction over there. So you can come down here go hang out in Mexico, then you can run back and um, you can uh, make a decoction from my, my tree for your hangover um, and more. But uh, no, please don't use my bark on my tree. Uh, but the other thing, look at, there's an eyeball looking at me right now, I'm noticing. Is that kind of weird? I think it's kind of cool. Uh, so the other use of this tree is for black rhinos because <laughs> I don't know, maybe they have hangovers and diarrhea, but they actually eat the bark of this tree in Africa. So if you want to be like a black rhino, you want to party like a rhino, then that's what you have to do. Um, and uh, that's pretty much all I have to tell you about this tree today. So there you go, now you know. And uh, yeah, what I can offer you is not, pretty, not to sell the tree, but you certainly can go to my Airbnb and uh, it's uh, going to be the Sunrise Vista Paradise on Airbnb. It's not ready yet, so I'm going to make it really nice for you. I'm not going to put it up until it's ready to go. But I'll give you more cool tours of this garden. Uh, there's so many fantastic things to see here, and I'm very proud of it, even though I only created maybe 10% of it and someone else did the rest. There you go. Shodia, Bractopetala, South Africa. <laughs>